everyone. Uh, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the Collider Flash Recap Show here on Collider Video, where we break down and talk about tonight's episode of The Flash. I even lost count of what episode. Was it episode four? Episode four. Three, four? It's episode sure. four. four. Season two, episode four. I didn't even look up what the name of the episode was. <laughs> blah blah blah. What's that, the name of the episode? Oh, the Fury of Firestorm. The, the, the what of Firestorm? The Fury of Firestorm. The Fury of Firestorm. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to talk all about the show tonight, but first, we're going to get started by introducing everybody at the table. First of all, sitting my left, because he's black, Wally West. <laughs> yeah, we, we were right. I'm David Griffin, and we were so right last week. Wally West was in this episode, and he was fantastic. Wasn't he good? He was so good. I can't. Okay, here's the thing. You know, it's it's a funny thing. Look, I, I everyone I will confuse actors and actresses and characters all the time. But that being said, it was kind of funny that at a table that I might point out with one white dude at it at a table <laughs> last week after that's true after we had this whole discourse about racial sensitivity <laughs> because true. of drug use and everything true. and then we see one black actor like oh, I guess that must be Wally West. <laughs> <He's> black, right? <laughs> And yeah. away we went. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> and, like, and I wasn't even sure. And I asked you guys, was that mm. Wally West? And you're all like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Shame. And I just thought it was yeah. Shame. perfect. After we had this whole discussion about racial sensitivity. <laughs> anyway, David Griffin, good to have you yes, here. Thanks for happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting over on this side of me. Hello, everybody. I'm John Roca, and I'm so happy. King Shark is here. This is so <laughs> awesome. Best part of the episode for me. Oh. And sitting over there on the end. Hey, everyone. Corey TK. I'm so happy to be here as well with um, everyone here. <laughs> um, I got to tell you right now. Well, first of all, let me tell you how we're, this is going to run tonight. We're going to talk about some of the things we loved about the episode. We're going to talk about some of the things that we thought maybe could have been better about the episode. And then we're going to take some of your Twitter questions as well. I don't know why, but I can tell you right now before we get going, this is probably my least favorite episode of the season so far. Wow. Mm. But I think we're going to have the most fun talking about yes. this episode yet so far. So <laughs> let's start off with the positives, Kerry. Let's go against the grain. Let's go over to you to start this thing off with some of the things you liked about tonight's episode <laughs> of The it. Flash. Um, Some of the things I really appreciated uh, Robbie's replacement. I liked <laughs> Jefferson, Jefferson Jackson. Jackson. Jefferson Jackson. Wally West. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Wally West. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of alliteration. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of alliteration. Yeah. But um, I liked the, the whole plot of them looking for, you know, his replacement and hurry where we got the asshole guy and then yes. we ended up getting the other guy who was actually very delicate and unsure if this was the right thing for him where the asshole guy was like, yeah, of course, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. And a rampage. But I, I like that. And I like that Professor Stein found his other half and... I thought that was good. Um, and of course, the King Shark ending. Uh, I think so the good. ending of this episode was the best part of this episode. <laughs> it really <laughs> was. It seems about right. For several reasons. It wasn't even just King Shark. No. But, um, I guess we'll go more into that. Uh, Mr. Roca, some of the things that sort of tuba positives about this episode. Yeah, I definitely enjoyed the way they introduced <laughs> Jefferson Jackson. I thought it was funny in a lot of ways because he's like, well, he's of course he's a football player. Of course he had trouble getting to college. Of course he's a mechanic. But they did a lot <laughs> of when plays they walk, with it. And what else do we say, of course, when they when he when they first walked into his Oh, yeah, he's shop. listening to gangster and music or rap music. <laughs> yeah. Dave was like, of course. And of course they're listening to hip hop. Because that's what we do. That's, that's what, what we do. Is that what black people do? Did we clear that up on the house, last episode? That's what you're going to hear. <laughs> and I like how he's like, well, well, you want me to put on like Celine Dion? <laughs> so he's like, he that's reverse, what white people listen to. Yeah, right. He's going to reverse races right back at him. It was hilarious. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, Canada. Oh, Canada. Anyway, uh, I, but I did enjoy actually the episode of furthering some of the storylines. I like that they're playing. I, I know a lot of people are maybe not in this camp, but I do actually enjoy the spin. It, Wally West fumbling around trying to figure each other out stuff. I like that they gave Caitlin more to do this episode, which I'm a big fan yeah. of because I love Panna Baker and I want to see her do more. Mm -hmm. And I was feeling like they haven't been using her much and then the episode kind of solved that. So it was really nice to see that. Really? I felt like she, they've been utilizing her pretty well. Well, just as a kind of the voice of reason in a way. Uh -huh. But in this, they actually made her an active part of the story, which I liked. Yeah, in, in essence, before it was like her and Cisco were equal. Yeah. And in this, they made her more well, of the, the forefront. Well, the firestorm situation. Well, that's what I mean. And that's yeah. what I liked. But you know, so. I got to admit, because at first, I'm, I, was, I wasn't I was digging what they were doing with Caitlin this episode. Because at first, as she's going, you know, as she's ragging on uh, on uh, Jefferson. Oh, yeah, Jefferson Jackson, yeah. I, a I'm little thinking, elitist. Why is she being such a bitch? Yeah. And then, and, but then I realized, you know what? This isn't just somebody to say Professor Stein. Mm -hmm. This is the person replacing yeah. her husband. Right. Mm -hmm. And 
and then when I put it in that context in my head, I'm like, no, okay, she's got a right to be a little bit bitchy about yeah. this. I, she totally has the right to. And then at that point, totally worked for me after yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Those guys too, like, she learned, she, we found out that Caitlin know about like his grades. Like, look, yeah. you didn't try hard enough, and I know yeah. you have something in you, but it looks like you're not trying, so maybe that's why she was kind of not really feeling him because yeah. he's kind of given up. Yeah, and, like, and she didn't go after his police record. Uh, yeah. For Hewitt, she didn't work. She didn't look hard enough for that because she wanted him to fit what she thought should be carrying over Robbie's legacy. Just like a woman, we went with our gut. We are initially things so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, there you no. go. You can make that claim, <laughs> definitely. No, you David, what about you? What are some of the things that uh, stood out to you that you liked about the episode? John, I agree with you. This wasn't the strongest episode of the season, yeah. but Roka, I liked you. You said during the episode that it's a little bit Smallville-y. Yeah, oh yeah. A little bit right. like Smallville. Feel a little Smallville-y, little bit, didn't yeah. it? But I, I, liked, I liked the campiness of it. I mm-hmm. liked how there was just some very random scenes, like how did you know Dr. Hewitt find Caitlin in the garage with you know Jefferson Jackson? Like, hey, I've been looking for you. It's like, yeah. well, where'd you come from? You know, and all that. And I liked the, just some of the campiness <laughs> with it. I thought that was actually pretty fun. I, thought, yeah. I don't know. I, I enjoyed, enjoyed like you know all the alliteration with Henry Hewitt and Jefferson Jackson, and the two right. characters vying for for power. It was a little silly, but I enjoyed. It. I really liked the part when uh, Cisco. Somebody asked like, "Hey, what would you do if you had superpowers? Wouldn't you like to have superpowers?" And Cisco's like, "Yeah, that'd be that'd be great." Yeah. Kind of scratching, you know. <laughs> I'd be and, all over that. You know, right. And then it kind of ties back to the end when he's talking to Professor Stein about how you know, look, embrace your powers. Like, look what yeah. Jefferson Jackson did. Look how he took a risk. He took a chance, and now it's better his life. Like, you need to do the same thing. Yeah, and fun, yeah. and the last little part he had in there too, I really like. Trust your friends. Yeah. Tell your friends. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Cisco moment of the week for me, and that should become a regular segment. I think <laughs> the Cisco moment of the week. Cisco <laughs> always has the best lines. I still can't believe in the first couple episodes I thought that character would almost turn me off the show, and now he's like my favorite thing mm-hmm. in the show. The, the the Cisco moment of the week is worst Tinder date ever. <laughs> that is definitely a left swipe. I mean that. <laughs> That was, uh, that they just, they use him so well. Um, and I got to say, <clears throat> while I was very apprehensive about it, uh, when they first introduced Iris's mother coming back into town, I got to say, I liked the way it was handled. Mm-hmm. I really did. And furthering some of the things we were saying last week, while I think a lot of us would agree last week, maybe the weaker link in the chain was Iris. I'm finding her more and more yeah. believable, mm-hmm. more and more strong. She's doing things now that go against what the cheesy TV character would do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the very fact in that first conversation was, look, I don't hate you and I wish you well, but it's been 20 years. It's like, holy crap, that is such a real world mature thing to say. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then also a very normal real world human reaction. We found out that the mother was dying but then find out there was another lie underneath that, and we gotta go into that in a second right, here. Yeah. Yeah. And the way she handled it, I am appreciating the Iris character more and more and more as we go. Mm-hmm. But that being said, let's talk about that other bombshell that was dropped, that Iris has a brother out there, Joe yeah. has another son. But you know what? what? It might not be Joe's <laughs> yeah, it might have been. kid. Well, they did say it was like eight months after she left. Mm-hmm. They might have been why she, so she left. She could have had Nookie with some random Yeah, guy. while she was on a high yes. or I mean, if the run. kid comes back and he's Asian. In the crack house. Right. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll know. It's, it's <laughs> Wally know. West. It's Wally West. Oh. It's you Glenn's kid. No. Um, <laughs> Why's it got to be Wally? <laughs> <laughs> um, but what... Yeah. I mean, first of all, Curtis, start with you. Like your reaction when you heard that. Mm-hmm. How do you think this is gonna play? What What did you feel when you heard that? I I wanted to know more details. I was sit- when I was like, who Who do I have a brother? Oh, I don't want to know. I'm like, well, we want to know. So please continue this conversation. <laughs> Um, but I have no idea, but I think it's going to play a very, very, very important role. And I think somehow she might even know him yeah. already. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I mean, the, the television worlds are always very small worlds, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I don't know. Roka, what about you? Yeah, I think the same thing. I think that it was nice to have that presented. And you know, they don't en- ever talk about anything without it meaning something to the overall story. So somehow it's gonna play in, that brother's gonna figure in, in uh, the brother is going to figure in in some way, I don't mean a brother. I mean, <laughs> I'm gonna show, we're gonna be very we sensitive. Like cover, we gotta cover we're our tracks, though, everything we say. <laughs> we're gonna be very sensitive. 
Uh, but uh, this brother, whoever the brother may be, is going to figure half brother may be is going to figure into this episode in some way. But John, what you said is great. I agree. Last week, she, last year, she was so, the weakest part of the show, and they've really turned it on its head and made her the, like the strongest yeah. part of the show. Even though the scenes are a little infuriating, that she's kind of cutting Vanessa Williams off and then running on, or leaving the scenes, so you're not getting a lot of information. I agree with you. It is furthering though the idea that there's a mystery out there, and yeah. so they're not going to have all the answers right presented to you. You're going to have to work a little harder as the audience. But it is a little it frustrating, frustrating that sure, it's, sure. they're stretching it out a little bit. First, she's got to go through this hurdle to finally yeah. meet her daughter. Then they got to go through this hurdle. Oh, I'm dying. And then right. another hurdle, which is she has a baby son. And yeah. it's just, I just want to But a lot, there are a lot of TV shows. Those three steps you just mentioned, there are TV shows out there that would take six weeks to tell those That's three true. steps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah. The Flash moves through them very, very quickly yeah. as, as far as I'm concerned. But you know what? Here, getting back to the iris and you're yep. pointing this out, is that when you look at, uh, I'm, I'm notorious Laurel Basher for, for Arrow, <laughs> but, but th let me just use this as an example for a second. Whereas when they were ruining that character and hence that show, um, <clears throat> what they did was they kept her in the deep water while trying to fix her, right? Right. What I feel they have done now, and I, I, I gotta believe that some of the same writers are on, from Arrow are on Flash too, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but what they have done differently, and I think what they are doing infinitely better, is that by removing, not denying the love interest between Barry and Iris, right. but by removing the love interest for now, it feels like they've moved Iris out of the deep water and they're kind of fixing what she yep. is yep. without her still being in this ma a massive piece or cog in the machine. Yep. And before you know it, they'll be ready with this character again to insert her back into yep. the deeper water. I just really love the way they're handling it. I think what a lot of shows don't do is they don't identify their weaker points or they refuse to acknowledge right. weaker points. Nothing's wrong with our show. And I feel like they kind of went, yeah, we've, we're, we're doing a great job, but we're a little weak on this character. Let's pay some attention to mm -hmm. this character, get it built back up to the, to the place where we think it can be, and then do some great things with it. And I just, I'm a big fan of how they're handling Iris at yeah. this point. So uh, anyway, let's get back to the whole idea of the sun, David. Your reaction mm -hmm. to that, where do you think this is going to go? I mean... I'm hoping that <laughs> that it is Wally West. I mean, <laughs> seriously. I mean, Pick you a know, side, David. I, Pick a side. I, I, I was thinking that too. So I'm hoping it's Wally West. Yeah. Also, though, I know I'm going to go away for one second. Speaking of Joe right. and talk and teaching uh, Patty Spivak to lie better. And then, because you go into the conversation with Iris and her mother, like, oh, there's another lie beyond that lie. Right. There's another lie beyond that lie. Like, people are good liars in this world, especially in that family. And Joe mm -hmm. said, like, you better learn. Yeah. And Patty's like, I don't lie well. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I, mean, I think that's kind of interesting. Like, it's hard to live in this world. Well, spe <laughs> speaking of George, trust? well, he, for me, had the line of the night when he said, I think we should be open to exploring something new. Mm -hmm. And he gave that to Barry so he can open, expand his love life. And then Barry gave that to Caitlin so mm -hmm. she can choose the per perfect suitor for the new Firestorm. So right. I thought that was a great line. Well. Yeah, that was actually really cool what they did there. Yep. All right, let's talk about some of the things then that maybe didn't work with the episode. And, and, and I'll lead this one off, because I got a little bit of a laundry list of things <laughs> that I didn't like. <laughs> Let me start off with Joe. Oh. You know, oh. I would you would think that at this point, after all the secrets and all the lies, and always see that the secrets and the lies never lead to anything good, his first reaction upon hearing Harrison Wells is back is, let's hide this from Barry. Like completely throwing away all the lessons they had already learned about keeping secrets mm -hmm. and lies from each other. Yeah. Don't you think for his own safety, knowing that Harrison Wells may be back might be good for Barry to know? I never, what I didn't think they did a good job of is is giving me a reason to believe why Joe would keep that from Barry. Mm -hmm. Like it's just mm -hmm. that, oh, this would be rough on him. But it could kill him! So maybe he should know about it so he can be prepared for it in case he just happens to pop up like he does a little bit later. Yeah. So that <clears throat> that was one thing to me. Another thing to me was, and it's always irritated me, and I, I, it's going to be a very unpopular thing to say, I know, but I have to say it. The actress from the original Flash show who plays the doctor oh, who yeah. heads up the science, the, uh -huh. British, the British doctor who runs the other lab, she is a terrible actress. <laughs> She's a. Ter I'm not going to blame the writers. Oh. I'm not going to blame. Mm. She is because everything is said like this. I know who I saw. <laughs> it was him. 
I am so sorry for the loss of your partner. My deepest condolences. Like everything. It's like, oh, my Thanks God. Bad. Yes, like turn it down from 11 just a little bit. Like it was actually, I mean, it's great that they utilized her in the show, but give her some constructive feedback, yeah. directors of the episode. <laughs> just tell her to reel it in a little bit. Anyway, Roko, what about you? What about uh, maybe some things didn't work for you? Well, so? I think I'd have to agree with what you said about Amanda Pace. Even though I love Tina McGee as the character coming back again, Dr. Tina McGee, it, she seems almost like she's acting in the 90s and everyone else is in 20, 2015. So it was a little weird to see her rhythm in that. I agree with you completely. I actually didn't like the small build nature of the villain for me because mm -hmm. I've grown to ex expect more from the Flash. He was evil. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, I'm gonna go to I'm the. I'm so angry. Right? I'm gonna go to the football field where uh, where yeah, Jefferson, yeah. Where, because that's where Jefferson Why Jackson found his glory. Lights, right? lights, yeah. He's got to refine his glory on the football field. It just I was like, mm, it's a little too. Mm. And I so for me it bothered me a little bit, but but. You know, they're going to do those things. You're going to have those occasional episodes as part of CW shows sometimes. Sure. You have those episodes. Mm -hmm. So you just write out the episodes because of, of, of because there's so much more better stuff going on in, in, in the episode. But yeah, though, that, that really bothered me. And, uh, and yeah, I would, I would say those are the only two really main things. Talk Dave, about you. What are some things that maybe didn't work for you? In this I, episode? I I actually enjoyed this episode. I, I guess the so did I. <laughs> actually, I actually enjoyed it. I too. think it was a little bit with Jefferson Jackson's introduction was a little yeah. It's a little. I don't know. I mean, I know the CW. They're not trying. You know, it's yeah. just a little, just too much of like the, it's all the tropes that you just assume a young kid, you know, from the streets, and he's, he's got his music and his football dreams, and his all. It's just it's a little too. And it's crazy because the actor's British. So he's putting on that. Well, accent. that's what I heard. His accent. I'm like, I'm like why accent. is he from? Because I'm and from so the East Coast. Like, yeah. something from New York City. You yeah. Know, but he's that's he's doing. I didn't know he was British. So yeah. I, I like that he's on the show. I, I think he's going to be yeah, a good addition to the show. I'm curious how he's going to fit in because we don't see him in the trailers for Legend, uh, Legends of Tomorrow. Right. No, so we I don't know if he's going to stay, stay behind yeah. or if he's actually going to be like a guest star, but I like him mm -hmm. as an actor. I just thought the way they portrayed him as this city kid versus the, the elite doctor, I just thought it was a little too... I don't think people are that black and white. I think you know everybody, no matter where you're from, has a little more you know ambiguity to them than, than what they showed. So it, it didn't bother me that much, but if I had to nitpick that, his introduction just is a little bit off for me. I, I felt one of the things that like I often say, one of the things I appreciate about, appreciate about mm -hmm. the show is that they take some things that other shows will take four or five episodes to tell and they'll, mm -hmm. they'll just get through it. And I like that, but sometimes that comes with a price. And sometimes that price is that sometimes feel, some things feel rushed. Mm -hmm. And him going, hey, we never met. Uh, come on down to our secret lab. Look at the Flash costume. Yeah. Look at, uh, how would you like to be a superhero? It's like, why don't you just start with like, look, there's some genetic changes. We need to save this guy. No, you're going to be a superhero. What if I don't want to be a superhero? Right. Like, right. what if I just want to save your friend's life and just be happy right. with that? I like right? how Caitlin told the story about Ron. He's like, wait, that, that was your husband up in there? He's like, yeah, yeah you can be that too. He's like, like wait, I don't want to die. Died. Yeah. 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 That's exactly yeah. what I was yeah. thinking at the yeah. same time. And so, and you know, and the villain was so, uh, so black and white. Yeah. It's like yeah. the moment he didn't get it. You know, uh, he was like what pouting. Do you get, what yeah. do you get your act together? All right, and all of a sudden, he's wrecking no. Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and all that. So I was like, yeah, okay, that's uh, that yeah. felt a little weak. So, so whereas that whole speed mentality, no pun mm. intended, for how they work through their plot devices is most often a strength. The the, the sacrifice of that is that sometimes it makes certain things feel rushed yeah. and not quite work right. If you had given them two episodes to do it. Mm or three episodes to do it. I was really heartbroken to see that Stein is gonna be gone for a little while. I Me really too. like ha him there being a part of that core team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Corey, what about you? What about some of the things that maybe didn't work for you? Actually, the one thing that really didn't work for me was the villain of the week. Uh, mm -hmm. Even though he was possibly, you know, the suitor for Firestorm, I felt that he just ended up acting like a woman on her rag, not to be terrible, but it was just so bad. He was oh. in such a bad mood and he was just, <laughs> Defi like his, he had no control. He didn't know what he was doing. I, I didn't, I didn't like this character at all. Yeah, like, I, it, it just didn't work for me. He's a good actor. We've seen him on Supernatural. Yes, he's on like, uh, Hannibal. Um, he's good. Like he can play. A, oh, he's that a good, was him in yeah, Hannibal. Wasn't he can play it? a That's really right. good villain. He's yeah. a good villain. I like him, and I felt he was a, a little bit misused mm -hmm. here and there. That's great. Okay, but. Whatever misgivings I had about the episode, I was still enjoying it, watching it. But like yeah. I said, I, to me, it was kind of the weaker one in the episode. Totally redeemed at the end yeah. to yes. me. That so was good. such a funny, fun, and wow moment all put in one. First of all, King Shark. All right. 
all I saw was the land shark from the old Saturday Night Live. Skit. <laughs> it's like, uh, Candy Graham. Like, that's all I, I just wanted somebody to, to do that. If you, if you know, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look up Land Shark Saturday Night Live on YouTube and go entertain yourself for a little bit. Um, he, he looked so ridiculous, but wonderfully yeah, ridiculous. Wonderfully ridiculous. He looked so he wonderfully great. ridiculous. And then all of a sudden, the, the day is safe. For a second there, I thought it was Arrow. I thought it was Arrow for a split really? second because, you know, first of all, something hits him uh -huh. and it's a little bit of a shock. And then you see a hooded figure. And my, my first thought, oh, Oliver came and mm. saved the day. But no, it's Harrison. Yeah. Um, revealing himself to actually be a hero, uh, which is one of the only things I've called right this season <laughs> so far. Um, That's so, all right. Just four episodes in. You got, you got time. I finally got, I was bound to get one right eventually. <laughs> I, I just love those last 60 seconds mm. of the episode. It, was, yeah. it just, it left me going, oh, I want to see the next episode now so bad. Anyway, Roka, let's talk a little bit yeah. about the end of oh it Oh my there. God. Yeah, definitely. I mean, as a big fan of the Flash show and a big fan of the Rogues Gallery, to see King Shark show up, I just lost my mind. And the way the special effects are so good for the King Shark. Yeah. Like, it was believable. You, you understood his strength. Like, you got all of that just from his presence, which I thought was awesome. And then have him, like, deflect the bullets like it was nothing. And the, the mouth is so scary. I have a thing about sharks, so for me, it really worked. Uh, and then have a, having Harrison show up, be that swerve. He's a good guy, but you can tell from the previews for the next episode, he's a good guy, but he is a strong guy. Like, And I think yeah. that's what's going to be nice that they're going to get give Ed Cavanaugh this whole... Is it, is Ed Cavanaugh, right? Is that no, it's uh, Tom, oh, Tom Cavanaugh. Cavanaugh. Oh, they're going to give him this whole like um, new way to play Harrison Wells, which yeah. I think as an actor, he's such a good you actor. must love that. Yeah, right. Uh, Tom is a good actor. So it, it, it's going to be so much fun to see him embrace this and how mm -hmm. far he can go with it and how he's going to enrich the show and it makes sense i think john to move uh stein out of there and move wells in uh, as basically taking that spot well, so to, to keep it going yeah. in that same rhythm i mean it's going to be interesting too because jay garrick is still up in there somewhere. right jerry jason with so, it. Yeah, he's taking that that shower and shave he was talking about <laughs> in the last episode a very long mm -hmm. one to get caitlin up there um <laughs> but yeah the ending i thought was really good but the yeah. only thing that i thought was a little cheesy was King Shark had a moment when he could have destroyed Barry Allen and he stopped and let go of him because Patty Spivet was yep, shooting. That was, yeah, a, that was a little cheese. That was a little Peace cheese for me. And, and somebody, somebody explained to me, how did King Shark sneak up on the Flash? <laughs> He's 12 feet tall Very and probably about 3,000 pounds. <laughs> and he snuck up on Cutting the flash. anywhere. Without the music. Don't yeah, you hear the music? Get around? Get you take the bus? <laughs> and don't you usually hear the Jaws music when a shark's coming? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. The land shark again. <laughs> what I was interesting about the ending is that this is one of the, I don't know if it's the first time, but we didn't get the, the after scene. If I don't, if I don't oh, remember. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, when right. the flash no, logo yeah. comes yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. This supposed to be another little after scene. Yeah. Although I remember thinking, as the, as the logo came up, I remember thinking, that just felt like an after scene oh, yeah. to me. I wonder yeah. if they're going to do yeah. still do something after that. Because what do you do after that? Right. right. What do you do after Harrison Wells reveals himself and he just dropped King Shark? And it I was mean, set up well because it lulled you with, you know, the montage. You know, uh, John, you and I are big fans of Sons of Anarchy. Yes. That's a, that show is the king of montages. You know, playing the music, has some, you know, somebody is saying something, you know, very profound. You're just kind of like, Oh, uh, you know, like yeah. Barry's looking at the Patty Spivet, you know, having some coffee, and like that's gonna be my girl, and then all of a sudden a shark hand grabs him in the back of the neck. I did at not first, see that. Coming. I thought it was Grodd. Yeah. yeah. When I, I saw yeah. the giant hand, I got all excited because I yeah. thought it was Grodd yeah. for a second, but just equally as excited to see King Shark, which make made it make sense. Well it brings us back to like we we, we, we got lost in this episode to figure out Firestorm, mm -hmm. we got caught up on the Firestorm mm -hmm. thing, and then we came right back and three storylines got presented to us or got enriched right in that moment. It's moving right? this season. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I like yeah. about it. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, Wells is back, okay, we're gonna see what's happening. That King Shark. I mean, Zoom's is Zoom is still yep. around and getting pe villains back from Earth Two, and then we're gonna be presented with a Patty Spivet storyline, love interest with yeah. with uh, Barry Allen. We're gonna get the he's actually going to pursue that now. Mm -hmm. I so really so, hope so that quick, grows on me because that's oh not, you don't like it. It still yeah. has it. not grown. I, I'm yeah. I'm liking the character. You like Patty Spivet? I like the character. But I'm not but buying the I'm not buying Spivet. the chemistry at this point. She's yeah. a cutie. I, don't know. I think she's gonna die. <laughs> oh! No. I, I but then go to Earth 2 and get uh, Earth 2 past Pivot. I'm telling you, I think <laughs> she's going to die. No. And, and, and I don't think, I think soon. Oh, wow. No. And by soon, I don't mean next week, but I, <laughs> I, I think before the end of the season, I think. 
Hmm. I said, well, okay, remember, I'm not right about anything this season <laughs> so far, so don't listen to what I'm saying. I mean, heaven, well, you were right about Wells. <clears throat> yeah. I was right about Wells. Well, there's one. <laughs> All right, let's take some of your questions. By the way, guys, you can communicate with us by sending out tweets with the hashtag Collider Flash. We asked you guys to send some out. A bunch of you did, so let's take a couple of your questions you sent in via Twitter. And the first question we come got comes from Jeremy Rosner, who writes, do you think any of the older villains that escaped last season, thanks a lot, Captain Cold, will appear again <laughs> and get developed more? Roka, are mm. we going to see any of those guys that got away at the airport? Well, geez, I, I, my, my only focus is Gorilla Grodd. Yeah. I want him yeah. to come back. You yeah. know, he's the, I don't, those, those are the guys, because all the other guys that escaped, eh, they were kind of like ancillary villains. They weren't really There's that There's the weather guy. guy. There's a the teleporter yeah. girl. Right, although they're, they're nice villains, but Ape for me, Sapien. <laughs> that's right. Oh, did he die? Yeah, one he of did them die. died. Yeah. He was the one that died? Yeah. Okay. Because, right. I mean, it'd be great to see Gorilla Grodd come back. That's who everyone's cheering for. I think for. he's going to come back. Right. That's who everyone wants to come oh, back. Oh, you know. Right? There's a reason he was never captured. Yeah. Or put down. Uh -huh. They've got plans for the Gorilla Grodd. I'm absolutely sure. The Weather Wizard would be nice because he is actually a bigger villain on Flash, on the Flash mm -hmm. comic books. So there's a lot more to play with there. So that'd be fun. Plus the whole idea that he's still mad about Joe killing his brother. So there's stuff to play with there that'll be fun. But for me, it's Grodd that I'm really focused on. Anybody well, else yeah. you guys want to see? I think see for come me, back? it's mostly, I mean, outside of Grodd, I'd like to see Weather Wizard 2 yeah. because I'm a big Liam McIntyre fan. Right. I love Spartacus. So I, I, it's more, I want to see the actor get work, not so much his character was so well developed. This one, I just, I, I just like his, him. A little actor. bit of trivia. I can't remember if we did this or not, but uh, after um, Andy, who played the original mm -hmm. Spartacus, uh, it, it, after Andy uh, sadly passed away, uh, and they were looking for another Spartacus, and of course, it was played by, you just said his Liam name, McIntyre. Uh, Liam yeah. McIntyre yeah. came back. But it was between Liam McIntyre and one other actor who he actually told this other actor he no. got it. And he went to the airport to get on the plane oh. to fly out there to get it. And then they called him the last second and said, we went the other way. We changed oh. our minds. Holy crap. Do you know who that actor was? Who? Did, Stephen did, Amell. Did, did, yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Really? Yeah, wow. Stephen Amell, which I thought would, that would have been really interesting, too. Oh, hmm. my God. So a little bit of trivia there for you. It worked That's out there. That's a very interesting. All right, let's move on to the next Twitter question. And this next one comes from Max Rock at Staksky. <laughs> I'm butchering that, I'm sure. What do you think Harrison wants with Barry? And by the way, can't believe they went with King Shark. Uh, I can't believe they went with King Shark either. I thought it was I'm great. I'm okay with it. But yep. that is the big question that the ending of this episode presents itself. Yep. What does he want? Now, I think they might have tipped their hands a little bit with the preview of next week, yeah. where he says, Zoom's been destroying my world, and now he's gonna come destroy yours, he needs to be stopped. So I think he wants Barry's help to stop Zoom. I think they're gonna work together as a team to stop Zoom. I, but that's my preliminary thought. Anyway, what yeah. do you guys think? I'm not sure that um, Wells is a good guy as much as doing what's best for him, still. Sure, yeah. That's my only concern, but you know, good or bad, I'm so glad Tom Cavanaugh's back <laughs> yeah. up in here. I'm glad too, Robert. Yeah. Do you think? yeah, I think so too. I think you're right. I think just because he's Earth 1, Earth 2, Earth 7, Harrison Wells, he still has the foundation of Harrison Wells' characteristics. So he's going to do what's best for him. And he's he's going to have an ulterior motive. He's going to have other stuff going on because also that makes a character interesting to watch. Like you're mm -hmm. trying to guess his, his or her motives. And you, Harrison is a guy we're always guessing what motives, and Tom does such a great job with him that it's always just kind of bubbling under the surface and leaving you guessing. So, yeah. And we all know that the last year, that wasn't Harrison Wells. That right, was right, we right. know that, but still you see the character and that's what we yeah. associate right. with him. Anyway, David, how do you think that's gonna play out? I think it's gonna be interesting to see which version of him that we get. Because remember the yeah. flashbacks in season mm -hmm. one, and he had he had a girl. I think he was. I don't know if they were married or they're going to get married. And she yeah. was in a car accident with him. Yeah. Right. And he seemed very like you know tender and nice and kind. Yeah. And this guy seems like you said John, serious, or, yeah. serious and strong. Yeah, more yeah. Than yeah. yeah just yeah. doing like Corey, like you said, whatever's in his best interest. So yeah. I'm be curious to see what kind of guy we get. I don't know. I think this guy's not the guy that was in our Earth. Right. No. All right. No. Let's take the last Twitter question today. And this one comes from Cadow, who writes, <laughs> I guess murder is legal against Earth 2 characters. And is that the last we'll see of King Shark? You know, no this no. has been That's four a down. theme. <laughs> this has been a theme this season that... You know, we talked about for the risk of repeating ourselves. Look, every week that they don't address this, I believe we still have to bring it up. In season one, especially in the crossover episodes between Barry and Oliver, there is this whole dynamic played out that, 
you know, Barry doesn't have to be like Oliver. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to be mm -hmm. rough and whatever. And there's other ways. And Oliver will actually put his his enemies down and stuff like that. And I, I can't. That's not you, Barry. Joe would say that's you. Don't have to be. A, yeah. yeah, yeah. Season two, kill, kill, <laughs> kill. Everybody's dead. And look, I, and I think we were talking about this at the table just before the camera started rolling. I don't I, I don't think we have any reason necessarily to believe that Wells just killed. King Shark. Yeah, no. I, I think I he's just think he's done dead. it. But even if he did, just like last week, I was willing to give Team Flash a pass because it was actually Captain Cold that killed mm -hmm. um, his father. Yeah. I would also be willing to give them a pass on this because it was actually Harrison that killed King Shark. Now, the first couple episodes, it was Barry doing the killing. Yeah. And they they <laughs> and not just in the spur of the moment. Like the first one um, with uh, when they had uh, uh, Christian in there, yeah. it was orchestrated killing it was orchestrated mm -hmm. planned out murder we're gonna this is how we're going to poison this guy to death with radiation and then of course they did it the next week as well mm -hmm. i they've got to address it mm -hmm. yes yeah. even if it's just a throwaway line saying hey we just accepted that sometimes that's the only way even if they just said that yeah at, at least address it a little because because to me this is a big gaping wound in mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. consistency of the show. But anyway, do you think this is the last we're going to see of King Shark? I mean, even if they didn't kill him, do you think that could just be there was a one-time <laughs> shot? Or Where's he going to go? <laughs> I mean, is he going to go back in the prison at the lab? Catch and release. In, in, where the are they going to feed him? I mean, do you give him, like, yeah. salmon? I mean, do you give him fish? Or is he going to go on the island, you know, with uh, Boomerang and all them over there? You know, uh, Feed him so, chump. Yeah, Feed no, where, chump. where's he going to go? Yeah. Um, I hope this isn't the last we see him. I hope that maybe he got away and he's with Grodd, and then there's, yeah. him and Grodd are going to oh. team up. Yeah. That would be awesome. I, I don't know. I just want to see Grodd yeah. just destroy everybody. Grodd's going to I yeah, want to see him destroy anymore. King Shark. That would be cool. I'm pretty sure we're going to see a lot more of King Shark, also because Patty has been after this guy for – since the beginning of this episode, she mm -hmm. kept talking about a man shark walking the streets, trying to get her his DNA he tested. The streets, Twelve feet tall, by the way, doesn't blend into a crowd. Yeah, he's a hood up. And so, <laughs> it would be a waste to have her want this shark so hard, and all of a sudden the shark disappears. Yeah. it reminds me of like earlier in the episode, she goes, "There was a witness who could have sworn they said the it was it was almost like he was a shark, a man shark." Really? Did he also <laughs> happen to mention he was fifteen feet tall? <laughs> Did he mention that just out of curiosity? <laughs> Yeah, well, the, his face looked a little weird. <laughs> That's all we got in the, yeah. in the eyewitness He had a lot of teeth. Right. There's, no, there's no way we saw the last King Shark. They spent way too much on the special effects to create it, to make it so effective. Just kill it off in, in mm -hmm. 30 seconds. So, And there's so much storyline with him in the DC Comics universe. It'll be fun to see how far they go with it. I think what you were saying earlier, John, is good. like the whole idea of them of them killing Earth level. That has we have to talk about it at some point, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Because it's almost like Arrow and Flash have done a reverse, where Arrow is like now talking about trying to stop everybody from killing or hurting. Mm -hmm. Like he's, he's talking to Thea, he's talking to you know to John and not hurt too mm -hmm. much. Now you've got Barry killing people, which is what Arrow was doing in the first season, yeah. uh, Oliver Queen. So it's fascinating to see them almost kind of switch switch shows in a way but it, i i think it it's more uh of a tr a problem on this show because he is so not mm -hmm. about killing that it's mm -hmm. weird to see him just randomly kill and then they move on yeah and you i know? would have mm -hmm. had no problem we said this in another episode too i would have had no problem with the look with with christian in the first one yeah it was or edge right? edge, 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 yeah, edge, yeah. edge i mean yeah christian, christian, christian was his partner yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> with edge it was he that was their only they had no other choice yeah. and if they had just said that we hated doing it but we had no other choice perfect and the second week too with sand uh, uh sand demon or whatever yeah. mm -hmm. it, same thing you really didn't have a choice that was your only way to stop them mm -hmm. and you did it just say i hated that we had to do that but it was the only way and you know what <clears throat> i'm also in the studio so i have to see a lot of the arrow even though i don't really watch it anymore but I, I watch it here in the studio while the recap show people watching man they, I think they had a great thing set up when Oliver was the Batman of this yeah. universe. Yeah. When he was dark and brooding, mm -hmm. it's like he has no superpowers. But and they showed in Flash, like, do you want to get on Oliver's bad side? And even <laughs> the Flash, like, even people's superpowers, like, nope, we yeah. don't want to get on that dude's bad side. I like that way more. And you're yeah. right, they're doing this kind of reversal now, and I don't like it. But it doesn't right. matter if I like it; it just matters if everybody else likes it. All right, folks. Well, that will do it for this installment of the Collider Flash Recap and Review Show. Thank you so much for joining us. Listen, 
the real important thing here is what did you guys take from this episode? What are your thoughts of the episode from tonight? Jump in the comments section below, leave your thoughts. And by the way, become an evangelist for Flash and this recap show. Share this on your Facebook page and your Twitter. Tell your other Flash loving friends about it. Get everybody jumping in and joining in the conversation as well. I want to thank the people sitting at the table with me. I'm going to start way over down there on the right. Way over here. Kaori, where can people <laughs> find you? You can find me right down there. K A O R I O U S. That's Kaorius everywhere. That's my tag. <laughs> Sitting right here, Mr. Roca, where can hey, people find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram, at the Roca Says. I'm always posting about the shows uh, I podcast or the shows I'm on, like the after shows here, and the Walking Dead after show on this studio as well on Sunday nights. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so just follow me there, and you'll be able to hear and listen to me anytime Hell you want. Hell of an episode of Walking Dead this mm. week. Yo, man. Can't wait to talk in there. And sitting Still, over here on yeah. my left, Iris' long-lost brother, David Griffin. <laughs> David, <laughs> where can people find you? You can find me uh, on Twitter, at Wally <laughs> underscore West. Uh, you know, just Check me out. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can seriously you can find me at Griffin DE. I'll be here oh, every week, and also tomorrow I'll be on the Star Wars Rebels after show with Christian Harloff. Nice, and John Campia. And uh, you guys can simply follow me uh, on Twitter and on Facebook, just at John Campia. Thanks for joining us, guys. Special thanks to Jonathan Dennis behind the cameras, and thank you to you guys for hanging in there and watching with us. Can't wait to see next week's episode. When Alvin Harrison Wells is involved, make sure to come back, and we'll talk about it all together. Thanks a lot for joining us, guys. Until next time, bye-bye.